Well, hello there. I'll be walking you through this process using Color by Felix products. This is a 12 by 16 canvas created with acrylic paint and topped off with a gold leaf finish. First, I'll be starting off with the Color by Felix acrylic primary colors. And I usually like to set my palette from the darkest hue to the lightest hue. Here I'll be using a set of blending brushes as well as detail brushes. I'm starting with the largest blending brush, which is a size M2, which is great for big paintings as well as large coverage for blending backgrounds. You wanna be sure to saturate your brush with water first before applying acrylic paint to the canvas. This definitely helps with the initial first layer and blending colors together. Here I'm just blending the colors black and white in a circular motion, which gives a raw organic texture to the background. I'm used to using nylon brushes, but this is a goat hair brush. It is listed that it should be washed a couple of times for less shedding to occur. It was a bit frustrating to get some of the hair stuck in the paint, so I do recommend washing your brushes a couple of times beforehand so that you can avoid that tedious process of trying to get the hairs out. Here I'm going in with the smaller M2 blending brush and I just added a hint of yellow into the mix just to give a subtle glow around the element. When working with acrylics, I actually love using this technique. I feel like it plays with the eye. It just gives a soft touch to the background, nothing too dramatic, but still in a natural organic state. So this is like my go-to. Here I'm jumping back to the largest blending brush and packing it with paint and water to achieve this drip technique. Next I'm going in with this size 8 detail brush and I'm mixing the colors yellow, red, and white to create a coral color for the first layer of this display. Instead of mixing on the palette, I do have a habit of blending and mixing the colors on canvas as I see fit. Here I just added a touch of black and blue to my mixture just so that it gives that differentiation of shadows and dimension to the display. Here I'm going in with the flat head brush and using just a flat black to get the corners of the sculpture. Flat head brushes are known to get very hard and crisp lines, so this is always recommended if you want sharp and distinct edges. You want to make sure that your brush is wet, not saturated with water, but wet enough so that the paint can glide smoothly. In my tutorial classes, I always recommend having a reference picture so that you can pay attention to where the colors are going. So here you will notice I'm doing a lot of color blocking. Even though this is the first layer, you want to apply exactly what color you see building up to the details. So say if, okay, this is a black sculpture, but there are hues of gray and tones of red in certain areas, you wanna apply it to such. 
Next, I'm going in with a size zero detail brush, which is helping me achieve those small and intricate lines for the features of this sculpture. And as you can see, I've jumped back to the flathead brush and starting to apply the second layer to this first layer with adding those tones and color blocking in some of the shapes that are starting to become more defined. So this would be shaping her neckline and then working my way to her chest area where the muscle tones start to appear and wherever the light source is reflecting. Though the medium acrylic is a fast drying medium, it is still recommended to be patient with the process. I get the beginning process can be a little intimidating because it's like, I do not know where this is going, but you have to be confident in your strokes and trust that the more that you build with layers, the more realistic that it will look. And eventually you will see your painting come to life. So I'm just saying be patient with yourself. <laughs> Next, we're moving on to the headpiece, which with this brush is a size four hog haired brush. It is ideal for landscapes. Um, so for Felix, he uses this brush to create bushes and leaves, but I'm using this brush to create just some of the foliage that is surrounding the focal point of the rose. Here I'm color blocking in some of the shapes of the petals from this rose with the size zero detail brush and then I'll go back in and start filling the first layer of each petal with red. You want to tend to each petal as a segment. So as I'm applying the first layer of red, I'm also starting to include hues of blue around the creases so that it can create a shadow against the petal that is laying on top of the one before. I'm also using black in the most deepest crevices to bring out the shape of the rose more. As I continue to build throughout the layers, now I'm starting to add some highlights. So here you can see me applying some yellow to some of the petals to make them stand out more. Here I just mixed blue and yellow to create this earthy green for the first layer of the leaves.
And now I'm jumping back to the rose to apply some highlights on the edges of the petals. So here's just a nice little hue of red and white just to give that crisp finish to each petal. Because the surrounding foliage is not really the main focal points of the centerpiece, I'm just adding enough color and detail to where you know it's there, but it's not really overpowering the flower itself. Here I'm just going in with a lime green, which is a mixture of more yellow, a bit of blue, and white, and starting to create some vein details on the leaf. Here I'm just creating the first layer of the pollen stem with brown, which is ultimately a mixture of all the colors together, and just adding some basic shadows and highlights to the petal behind it. Here I've just taken some yellow with the detail brush and adding some dots to make it appear as though it's pollen sitting on the stem. And then going back in with the dramatic highlights of white to top it off. At this point, I'm just studying my reference picture and paying attention to any details I may have missed or any last minute touch ups that I can add. With applying final layers, I use water as a thinner and less paint. I lightly graze the canvas with the color of choice so that it appears transparent and not overtaking the previous layers with opaque color. Here I will be using a palette knife and strong adhesive glue to apply gold leaf to the background. I'm scraping the glue in the direction I want the gold leaf to lay when applied. I allowed these placements to sit for a good 30 minutes before they were completely dry. So you want to make sure that the gold leaf is sticking successfully when removing it. And voila, here is the finishing touch. I'm going to go in with my finger and create some of that rugged texture that you would see if it was paint with using a palette knife. If you would love to try out Color by Felix products for yourself, be sure to click the link in my description box and check out his shop. Any purchase that you make from this link, you will get 40% off your next BJC order. Thank you for tuning in and catch you in the next video.